right now, we need to continue um, discussing about the functional decomposition. Okay? So the process for creating DFD or data flow diagram is an iterative process of uh, it's an iterative process beginning with a single process that is the whole system itself. We break down this process into high-level processes to, to actually describe um, the major processes of the system. Each of the high-level processes are broken down into finer or low-level details iteratively. So you can think of this iteration as a form of elaboration of the processes in the software systems in the same way that we also elaborate user requirements using the other OOP tools. Okay, This process of elaboration, um, breaking down processes, is actually called functional decomposition. Okay, since we're talking about the uh, since we're talking about the functional decomposition, we need to talk about the DFD levels. Okay, these are the level of DFD following the functional decomposition. The data flow diagram begins with a single process that is actually the system. We call the diagram a context DFD or the context data flow diagram. Okay context or context diagram or context data flow diagram is actually an overview of the organizational system you will see here who are the entities or who are the users who interacts to our system okay next one we have the level 0 DFD um, it is actually a representation of systems major processes at high level of abstraction okay so from the context data flow which is actually the overview there's actually a f uh, there's actually a data that will um, that will uh, that you will encounter from the user or from the entity going to the system or to the system going to the entity here in the level zero you're actually um, getting the major processes okay you're getting the major processes of the interaction from your entity um, to the processes or to the system itself okay next we also have the level one it actually the results from the composition of level zero diagram so since we are um, breaking down the the processes uh, from the level zero we are talking about the major processes happened in the level one we're actually decomp um, decomposing um, the major processes in the level zero and we are making it um, uh, we are making it more specific here in the level one DFD okay we also have the level N level N DFD this is actually the results from the composition of level N minus 1 diagram so you will see later on um, for example um, I will show you an example here one moment in the context diagram you will see 0 okay in the level 1 you will see 1 or whole numbers in the level 1 you will see 1.1 1.2 so this is actually pertains to the um, major process here so you are breaking it down here in the level 1 in the level n you're actually using 1.1.1 or 1.1.2 so if we are talking about specific processes here in level 1 in level n you are doing it detail by detail okay so it's really more specific here okay so when we can say that it is enough okay when you can say that um, tama na. <laughs> okay when we can say that it is enough um, if the primitive can be no longer be decomposed okay so um, if ever that that certain process can't be decomposed anymore you can stop okay 
there you go if sobra na if tama na enough na <laughs> just kidding <laughs> let's proceed okay so let's have context diagram as an example if you can see here in my presentation uh, this is a good example of a context diagram so by the way the context diagram it represents um, the major entities that interact with the system just like what I said earlier um, in the context diagram the whole system is represented as a process so we have you can see it should have a zero here the meaning of that one that is actually your application or that is actually your system okay context diagram shows these uh, the system boundaries the external entities that interact with the system and major information flows between entities and the system okay and also the um, and the major data flows are represented here as well take note only the process and entity symbols no data store here so you should be only seeing um, the three um, notations or symbols in DFD except for the data storage because we're gonna use the data store in the next uh, in level 0 level 1 uh, sorry level 0 level 1 and level n okay so if I will explain this one uh, we have um, enrollment system so our enrollment system which is the uh, we actually it represents a process it gets the student details from the entity student okay and also um, the enrollment system it actually provided a students enrollment details to the advisor then the advisor will send a student ad, uh, advisement um, details going to the system. Then lastly, um, the clerk, which is our office staff, um, she or he will be the one who is in charge in putting in or get uh, putting a data, which is the class offerings going to the enrollment system. Okay. So again, we are talking about the processes here. Uh, we are talking about the uh, entities. Okay, we're talking about the interaction from the entities going to this to the system and vice versa. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, here we go. We are actually I'm actually um, presenting you the level zero DFT. Okay, the level zero diagram. Um, is the level of the composition of the context diagram in this level by the way guys um, the major processes are presented here okay each are numbered from 1 to n but the numbering does not necessarily mean it is the order for which the processes are executed but actually just to let you know that in the industry uh, we are basing it through the numbers right so um, if it's one the next flow for the uh, the next process for number one it's two like that one and in industry as well oh it's that's why it's called level zero because there should be 1.0 here like that or 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 and all like that one but it's okay we will just follow this one okay so some data flows are also broken down and data stores are also are also included here already okay so take note processes and data flows should be on the verb phrase processes we have here the process we also have also have here the data flows it should be on a verb phrase okay so if you will see this one um, class offered or um, classes offered it should be a verb phrase and take note as well that the data source here should be the description of the database how um, in your uh, 
it should be the same database table that you're gonna use in your database implementation itself however I would like you to uh, I would like to advise that it is better to use your database table na ha? Um, here already for example in the class offering um, you use the class offering here you, cl you use class offering here so this class offering should be implemented as well in your database so for example if you use um, um, MySQL so I, I should be able to see the class offering table there okay for at least um, delete na mo maglisod okay if I will explain this level 0 again um, level 0 again it is the level of the composition or the um, the, comp the composition itself of the context diagram so in the 1.0 you can see here that there is a process happen so it will enlist a classes to take so there is an external entity that happen because the student will um, will put his or her student info also the courses to take if you will see here as well na ay ginatawag na retrieve so there is an retrieve uh, there is an retrieval of data happened so from your class offering data store it um, it throws a class offering or class classes offered going to the process then after the process it actually saved there's actually a saving or update here to the enrollment data so it passed through the classes to take okay we also have here the record class offering for the semester um, the clerk inserted a um, a data uh, inserted a data which is the classes offered to the process if you will see here as well we have um, evaluate advices assessment pay enrollment and validate inform uh, validate enrollment and lastly the student or the entity student will receive a validated form 5a okay if you will see here we have three um, data store we have d1 um, class offering d2 enlistment data and d3 we have the enrollment data okay that is actually the level zero so let's proceed right now we need to talk about the level one so for our level one um, um, each of the processes at level zero are refined in two deeper um, deeper levels from level one to level n just like what I said earlier I know that I only showed you here 1.1 but if it's really necessary to decompose um, this type of process there should be 1.1.1 okay like that one that's really possible okay until primitive processes are achieved or the analyst decides that the refinement is already sufficient or it's already completed or it's enough okay in this example process one of level one in list classes to take are refined so diba we talk about the enlist classes to take process here from the level zero and we refine that one or we decompose the level uh, we we decompose the process 1.0 to these um, sub processes okay so the processes are numbered uh, from 1.1 1.2 up to the number of sub processes so currently we have 1.5 right the rest of the processes in level 1 can be refined as well uh, as well and each sub processes are numbered accordingly note that class uh, when processes are broken down into sub process and deeper sub levels we maintain that whatever data 
that gets into or goes out of the parent process are reflected in the sub levels. This is actually called DFD balancing. I will talk about DFD balancing in our next slide, but I need to discuss first what happened here in the level 1. So again, this is actually the decomposition or the refinement of our 1.0 1, 1, uh, 1 here, which is the enlist classes to take process. So there should be a data um, from, uh, sorry, um, there should be a data from the student that will be inserted here also the classes offered from the entity student that will be inserted here in the process so that the search class offering for required classes will be satisfied after this process will happen the available classes will go through the 1.2 which is the add class to list then selected classes check availability let's see if the availability or the full class to wait list will be saved here if we will save this one to list of course there should be a data storage okay and of course there should be a data storage here because how can we get the student info right so there is a data source here or data storage also there's another data storage here okay we are retrieving it here we are actually saving it here so after that one will happen um, the available classes will be saved as well here so same process just like what I did here okay so again, we need to talk about the DFD balancing. So uh, when you say DFD balancing, it is, imp it is actually an important rule that we should follow in the functional decomposition is the balancing. Okay, this is actually the conversion, uh, there, this is actually the um, conservation of inputs and outputs to a data flow process. A process when that process is decomposed to a lower level so when you say balance a um, number of inputs to lower level DFD equals number of inputs to associated process of high level DFD okay next number of outputs to lower level DFD it should be equivalent to number of outputs to associated process of high higher level DFD I will show you an example just like this one okay so this is a good example of an of an unbalanced DFD okay so this is actually an unbalance because the process of the context diagram has only one output right but the level 0 diagram has two outputs if you will see here one output one out, uh, one input one output but if you will see here um, there are two inputs then it only have one output so saan ang galing yung isa there you go right again we need to take note about um, these um, uh, guidelines number of inputs to lower level DFD it should be equivalent to number of inputs to associated process of higher level DFD and the other one number of outputs to lower level DFD should be equivalent to number of outputs to associated process of higher level DFD okay so hopefully you have gained a lot about the uh, about the DFD or about the flow models that we have discussed and in our next discussion, uh, we will have more examples about the DFD.